Hey folks, Arm and Hammer here. Happy Thanksgiving. I've got not one, but two pieces of content for you today. They're both a little bit longer, but I think you guys are going to enjoy them. I got a chance to interview both Sean Ramirez and Kelly Holm. And if those names sound familiar, but you can't quite put your finger on it, those are the Masters athletes who recently were announced as having positive doping test results from the CrossFit Games. Now, they both have similar stories in that they are saying that they had tainted supplements, but in Sean's case, he was unable to successfully appeal his ban, and in Kelly's case, she became the very first athlete who was tested positive for in CrossFit that had her sanction reduced, so she was actually able to prove she had a tainted supplement. So the first interview you're gonna be seeing here right now is gonna be Sean Ramirez. He's uh, really, really fired up. Obviously, uh, he has an interesting story. I think uh, we really talked into the process of being notified, the appeals process, why his appeal didn't go his way, and what he's gonna be up to next. Enjoy. Test me, that's why when all these freaking mudslingers, even you guys are ripping me, but that's your job, I don't, whatever, I don't take it personal. But all these ones on social media, slinging mud, being idiots, I'm like, look, if I was doing this year, they're like, oh, it just was out of his system. Oh, it was 20 millionths of a gram, bro. Like, it doesn't even affect, like, performance-wise, it has no, and I'm like, whatever. They're like, oh, but it was, it was coming off your, your, you know, coming off your cycle. I'm like, first of all, it was on a steroid. Second of all, <laughs> that would mean me winning Wadapalooza, me winning Granite Games, me winning the Open, me winning the Qualifier every year for four years straight. I'd have to be on that shit all year, all day, every day. Dude, I would be growth out of my mind, all jacked up, like freaking tumors growing out of my head. Like, like screw you guys. Like, you guys, you have no idea what it takes to, to get at that level, to stay at that level, to stay on top. And then this thing hits me. And I'm like, you know what? F, like... As long as the people I love and care about that know me know the truth, and I'm, the fact is, I already got one contaminated product back, which I had eight, and you guys were ripping me on, oh, it takes eight products. Bro, taking the same eight flipping products every single year, they test me every single year at the games, they randomly test me, so now it's like, oh, another contaminated product. I'm like, come on, guys, like, seriously? I've been on this freaking track for five years, testing every year, been clean. I never take anything that I don't know about. I get it tested third party. This just happened to be a freak effed up product. And right now, I am gonna make it my job to go out there and to make sure the FDA regulates this crap and gets this stuff on labels because MMA fighters are getting killed. My, my attorney who I had to hire has like eight MMA fighters that are having the same issues, Olympians, all these people that nobody's hearing about, they're hearing about all this CrossFitters, but dude, professionally in terms of sports, because the masses, you guys, the people that aren't competing, that aren't regular, that aren't having these tests, are the ones that are getting the be the bang for the buck because they're getting these supplements that are tainted, that are good, because the products that I take are good, but they're not like making me this exceptional athlete, dude. Like I freaking work hard, but I know at 40. 44, bro, we need to freaking recover. I'm doing everything I can to recover. And that's where me and Ron are always laughing. We're like, dude, there's so many things out there. Like you guys were talking about the TRT and all. Dude, when I broke my ankle in three places in my tibula, the doctor's like, look, I can give you a legal prescription. And I'm like, look, they test me all the time, bro. Even if I wanted to take it, I can't. He's like, yeah, but you have atrophy. You have to build that back up. I go, bro, if I can't do it naturally and like the, in the condition I am, I don't even want the, the title again. And dude, I went back on one leg, bro, 70%, and still had the largest margin of victory. Like, say something now. Like, I, that's why like, I laugh at it, but at the same time, it's, it's, you know, it is tainting everything I've worked so hard to achieve, and right now I'm just at that point where I really have bigger things, to bigger fish to fry, like with the school and all that, and like I'm literally sitting on school stuff right now, that I, I just want people to understand out there and that's why I agreed to do this is who I am, what I'm about, really what is the truth behind everything I've been doing for the five years and just know a little bit more about me because I feel like the ones who actually had like negative comments and things, bro, I'll take those in all day if they have some kind of like education or some kind of like, like, like ground they're standing on but if they're just slinging mud bro just get out of here man but those guys like i'm like hey dm me personally 
because I want to talk to you. And I've done that to a couple of people and the outcome's great. They understand, they see where I'm coming from and that's why I wanted to, you know, jump on with you today. Yeah, man. Oh, you've been, you haven't been recording, have you? What's that? Oh, you have. What'd you say? I said, you haven't been recording, have you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 so what I do is I try and record as much of it as possible and then I'll do like an intro and stuff later and that way I can just like get right into, get right into starting. So whenever, you know, I, I literally started like two minutes ago. It wasn't even a thing. I don't know if, if, if I got enough of that, I would love to include that because I, I love that you just – you're like fiery right out Ram, the gates, no, just man, jumping right in there. right now just because, dude, this thing happened yesterday at school and I'm like, man, that's why like, CrossFit is such a microorganism. It's always been. They're like, oh, you know, you know your, your, your run was fun or, or your run was good, you know, uh, getting paid to work out. I'm like, bro, that was always just a, like – fun side little gig. Yeah. I got the Nikes. I got the, the, the bigger sponsors and they've been very, very supportive. But dude, if I did it for one year, one year, I said, let me just see what a professional athlete, you know, really is all about. <clears throat> and I hated it. I was so bored. I'm like, dude, I need to get back to work. And the example I was leading with my kids, like, Oh yeah. Professional athlete. What if I get hurt? I lose everything. Like there's no, there was just there was no depth in it, and I just got so tired of of just being an athlete. Like I'm, you know, I had too much really to. I felt like I can do out there in terms of what, like you know, the worth I can bring to to other people and other kids and leaving legacies. And and that's the one thing I'm more upset about than anything is is uh, you know not being able to uh, you know finish on the note that I wanted to because I was not coming back. 45 to 49 was had I had no interest in whatsoever. So the band really doesn't mean anything. It's just the 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 tainted name right now is just killing me, you know, where people are like, oh, Ramirez? Oh, yeah, I can see that. Like some of your boys are like, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Come on, guys. Like, really? Like, and that's where I'm more upset. It's, it's people are, right now are, are going, oh, like Nick Palladino. Like you guys mentioned that. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. Come on, kid. Like, like, literally, this is what's upsetting. I've gotten stuff from like Haley Adams. I got stuff from, you know, um, from Kyle Casper like all these guys like reaching out, Sean, and I, I know the real you. Like these guys, I have a personal good relationship. I thought I had that with Nick. Then Nick goes on to hit me on. So, oh, you know, I guess the uh, 2016 announcement is, is my time. I'm like, dude, I was literally on one leg there. Like I was just coming off of surgery. Like I barely was able to walk in there. I ended up separating my shoulder, trying to do a breakdance move in the middle, trying to be like 18 in the little, like, you know, the pre warm up thing, right? Because they're like, hey, they put on some, like, you know, Sugar Hill Gang. And I'm like, that, that, that. And we were doing like handstand walks, just having fun. And I just, I literally, like, like dislocated my shoulder, put it back in, didn't say anything, swelled all up. Like, that's why I had tape on my shoulder that day. Like, I was jacked. And I still went in there and took care of business. And after I let Nick know, hey, these are the mistakes you made. Here's how you can better yourself. Sat him at the dinner table. Look, man, like, like a big brother, like a father figure. Like took him in. You know, it was like, look, kid. And it was such a cool moment that when that happened, he's like, don't take it personal, bro. Even if you pissed hot or not. Like you did that on the side, like on the, on the text. And I'm like, really? I was like, good luck with your endeavors, kid. I go, keep treating people like this. You're going to go far in life. You know, and that's the way I ended it. Like. If that's the way that you're going to be, guess what? Good luck, all right? Because that's that's really going to steer you in the direction that you're not going to want to go and you're not going to like the end result, but I'm okay because now I know who you are and now I, now I know where, where, where I'm going to leave myself, which is going to be as far away from you as possible because you, you, you give nothing in return. And, and, and I thought that I, I knew him better than that. I haven't had any other friend. Like, you know what's crazy is that – through this, my arch rival, which prior to Neil Maddox, was Robbie Perovich. And Robbie started slinging some mud just because, you know, hey, this is an opportunity to hit Shami's down, which, what's up, buddy? Love you. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> which, which, um, which I didn't blame him for, but at the same time, I'm like, bro, that's low. Come on, man. I beat you fair and square, this and that. We ended up having a 30-minute conversation the night that it came out. 
and are now friends. Like I never knew. He's like, bro, you didn't say a word to me at the games. I said, because you had that stare, man. You had that look. I didn't want to come near you. And I said, and he was like, that's what I thought about you. All you had to do is say hi. I'm like, shut <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, look, man, you had the eye of the tiger. You were in your zone. He's like, I did that for fun. He was like, he goes, I, I really had meant nothing by that. And he's like, I didn't know anybody there. We all look up to you. All you had to do is say hi. I cracked up. I'm like, dude, I was like, you know what? That's cool. And then he was like, look, he goes, you know, no matter what goes out there, I know the guy you are. Like after we talked, then it was like, wow, man, this guy is a really good guy. And you know what? I actually enjoyed our conversation and I'm, I'm actually mad that I didn't open up because I saw him as a Calvin Klein model. He baited me. He put pictures of him and like as a model. <laughs> Guys, can you go back in the playroom? Cause I'm, yeah. You know, Calvin Klein, all this ends up here with a top triathlete on the USA hockey team. Like all these things I didn't know about him. And he comes out there and just, dude, I was behind 56 points last day. I'm like, dude, I'm done. I'm, I'm shooting for second, you know? Um, so that right there was like a perfect testament, not judging anybody by a cover because personally, it's a great guy. And that's what I don't want people out there to misconstrue who I am and what I'm all about. And that's where I'm open for any questions on your end, like if you want to get down to the grit, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, to, to be honest with you, I think something that's really interesting, you mentioned Robbie Perovich. Before we get into, get into talking about this stuff, I, I think... Robbie is a really interesting human in that uh, I remember in 2011 when the first open workout came out, he won. Like he he was like the number one in the world in that open workout. Canada? Oh, in the world. In the world. Yeah. Double wow. unders, power snatches. And we're like, who the wow. fuck is this guy? And then we looked it up <laughs> and we're like, he's a model. Like what? what? <laughs> well, that's not fair. Like this guy's so fit and he's a model. Like what's up with that? Uh <laughs> Yeah, so Robbie well, that's Perovich. What I thought, and that's what I told him. I'm like, look, I thought you were an internet superstar. I'm going to be honest with you. Totally. You know, your numbers were through the roof. <laughs> I'd never heard of you before. Some Canadian dude. I'm like, get out of here, bro. Don't don't give me that. You know, and then and then they dinged him for some reps on, on the qualifier. I'm like, oh, this guy's a fake, bro. Then he goes out there and whoops my ah. I was like, what just happened? Who is this guy? Then I find out, oh, he's got, you know, hockey experience, triathlete. He's got this. He's a great swimmer. I'm like... Oh, I'm in trouble. That was like day three. I realized who this guy was, not just a model, because I underestimated him. Then it was too late. But then it was his to lose. So luckily I came out on top on that, but that was not my games to win because he had me freaking wrapped up after day two, you know? But it's just amazing how something like this that could be so harmful and so detrimental to my image and everything that I'm about can bring somebody that I never would have talked to ever. Um, you know, in, in my lifetime. And that to me was really cool. And it's, it's actually happening more, more now than ever. And like, even with these guys that are slinging mud, like, Hey, DM me. I want to talk to you about this. Like I'm not hiding. I have nothing to hide. If this was all true and I was doing this every year, do you think I can look at my kids in the face and give them a kiss goodnight? Do you think I can look at the kids I'm trying, I'm motivating every day out there and be a mentor for them. Do you think I can bring 30 family members to the games every single year, look at them all in the face knowing I'm cheating? Do you think I can look at the cameras, my fellow competitors? Absolutely not, period, bar none. And that's who I am. Like, I love bringing everybody in. I pretty much, I don't wanna take full credit, but in terms of masters, put masters on the map to give them more opportunities, to bring more sponsors, to bring more light to us, to show that we are capable of doing things at an old, you know, <laughs> veteran age kind of, you know, stage in our life. And that's really what I was about, bringing awareness. I did it. I did it for five years strong and I did it clean every year. And I know that. And that's all that really matters to me. And the ones that are close to me know that. And that's, that's, that's the God's honest truth. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into doing what I do. Supplements. But yes, I take eight supplements and I disclosed all those to CrossFit, showed them what I took. And I do take a pro hormone. It's called um, D-testerol, but it's, it's tribulous. It's all natural. It's all like, and I, I actually sent that to labs because I thought that would have the Osterin, which I never even heard of Osterin until after Ricky. I was like, really? And um, it came back negative. And I sent it to CrossFit and they're like, as, as much as that looks like a red flag, it's still all natural and it's not a banned substance. And so, I knew that. So 
uh, I, I, for me, just for my sake, I think this would be interesting right. for a lot of people, but walk me through the process of like, when were you tested at the games and were you tested in the off season at all? And then like, when do you get notified as to what, what's going on? And then like, maybe just, just the, that entire process of like getting tested, <laughs> yeah, getting I, notified I, I in the appeal. Know, yeah. From your last, one of your podcasts, when you were talking about it, I knew you guys didn't know, um, every year at the games, they always test the top three. Every year. So from 2014 to 18, I've been tested every single year. They don't even allow you to touch your family members. In fact, the last year I went to go, or in 2017, guys, I went to go and, and hug my brother-in-law because it was a journey getting there when I beat Robbie. I, when I, I don't want to say that. When, when Robbie and I battled and I came out on top, um, that's when they went, whoa, whoa, whoa. They don't even let you touch family members. You literally, if you're in the top five and you're in contention to get the podium, they ask you to bring your ID and you can't do anything after. You go up there, you win, you do your thing, they, they put you on the blocks and then you go right out to testing, right? So that's been every single year. Off season, I've been on their, their three year, like every three months they need to know my whereabouts. They can pop in on me any single time. Wadapalooza, they came and tested a bunch of people. That's when I was hurt. They didn't test me there, but they always have known where I was going, when, when I was traveling, and at any given time, they and they've done that to a couple people where they, they've gone to test them. Oh, no, they're not here, and they've disappeared, funny enough, and then you get banned. So I've never violated that, um, and this year was no different. They tested me. They ended up testing blood this time um on the number one the, the neomatics and kyle and all the ones who got first they tested blood because that's like an expense just testing urine is i think like two grand but testing blood i think runs up in the eight to ten thousand dollar range if i'm not mistaken so they always test us every single year you know and um and that's where for me uh i've never ever i've always because my degree is in exercise physiology and sports medicine and i study this stuff and I know my body is like a temple, man. I know what I put in it. I dial in nutritionally. I dial in on supplements. I take like a standard three to four, like I take three throughout the year, like the BCAAs and all your like your, your natural stuff, but the, the testerol, um, the, the deer antler, like those things that are more for recovery as my volume increases of training, that's when I start adding more supplements to help me recover. I mean, I'm on Furitech almost nightly. I'm on like, I'm swimming in my pool like three days a week, like just to flush. Like there's so many things that I do to keep my body moving. Um, and that's what people don't understand. Like to, to compete at this level, if I train like this all year, I'd be dead. There's no way I can survive. People go like, man, I'm so beat up. Well, cause I don't do this year round. You do this year round, you're hurting dude. Like I dial in right at the open qualifier and then in the summer leading into the games it's peaking i'm ready to go like that's when i'm priming um but to answer your question in terms of testing that's what they do they test you every single year top three and now they're testing four just in case that you know somebody gets hit then that person bumps up they've been doing that last two years now since they've been you know coming down hard on the drug testing so when did you get notified that uh your sample had come back positive uh, November, what was it? No, September 7th, September, was it September? Yeah. September 7th. So like six weeks after, yeah. August, yeah, like a month after. And then how, so how did the appeals process start? Like, what did you do? So you get, you get like, you get a letter basically. An email. You get an email. Oh, even fucking worse. God, that can get <laughs> lost. Jesus Christ. So the email came in on Friday, right? And I don't even totally check that email. Email came out on Friday, happened to be my son's 13th birthday, right? So then on Monday, I get another email from Justin Berg and these guys like, hey, you haven't responded, you have 72 hours to respond to, to, to appeal, you know, you, need, you have you know, less than a day left, you need to you know, reply. I'm like, holy crap, I just saw this now, it was my kid's birthday, we had a huge 13th birthday party here with you know, a bunch of kids and I literally put my phone and my laptop away and and absolutely, I'm gonna appeal. I'm 100% innocent. So I did my appeal, and I sent them just a generic letter. Like, I mean, I would love to give it to you. I actually printed it out for you guys, but whatever. So I did like a, a generic. I didn't lawyer up. I didn't, you know, sit there and go, "Oh God, what am I gonna do?" Like, guys, 
this is what I take. You guys know me every year I test, you know, clean, you know, you got, I'm never the biggest guy out there, the strongest guy out there. I'm never the one of the best engine. Like I'm just, ge I'm just general in all. And I do well in most, and I always fill holes every year, every year I am like on the chalkboard. And that's where Neil Maddox went to the board because the guy who barely finished the swim comes in and whoops everybody on the swim. I'm like, where did this guy come from? Chris Henshaw, good job, buddy. Hey, good job. Buddy. Like, <laughs> he did his homework. But, you know, hats off to him. But not to get off subject, like, that's that's it. They they send, you know, an email out to you. You have, you know, limited days to reply. You do your appeal. So when I sent my appeal thinking they're going to say, oh, and I knew, first of all, I didn't take that product. Second of all, I never even heard of the GW15. Never even heard of that. You know, people are like, like the guys you're talking to are like, yeah, you can take that and have an engine. I'm like, really? Like, first of all, I never even heard of that thing. It's a metabolic modulator. Like, it's a fat burner. Like, why do I need to cut fat? Like, I never, anyway. Um, and I was asking them what amounts were in there. I'm like, guys, what, there, there can't be anything because I don't even take this stuff. And they said, we can't disclose that, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, um, with this, with, with your letter coming back, this is our final decision and we're going to move forward. And I'm like, what? I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't even give you guys an appeal. I just gave you guys a, a return on email. So that's when I was like, all right, now it's getting serious, you know? And I thought, and that's the thing. I don't blame CrossFit for, you know, following the rules and regulations that they, that they, um, that they have. And, and I'm not like ignorant, like, you know, Nothing ignorant would excuse, you know, the, the testing, um, you know, and I'm not sitting there like blaming them for it. Like they have to follow that. But at the same time, like I felt like they were like we were family, like, you, have, you know, with the open announcement, all these things like, guys, let me know, like where this came from, like what what amounts? I just want to know, like what's going on? But I didn't know you had to do that through a legal process. And then that's when I talked to my brother in law and he's like, look. I, let's just find a sports attorney. Let's get the, you know, so we can do a formal appeal. So they granted that. Then they granted me, um, which was awesome, which at first they didn't, they weren't going to, and they did, which was great. They granted me the ability to get them on a conference call so we could talk. And that was great. Um, and I, cause I didn't want them to proceed until I was able to test my supplements and do the labs, which I didn't even know that was part of the process. Like I've never done this. I don't know, you know, and they're like, look, you can test your supplements if you have, and I had a lot that were left over. Um, and, but that's out in California, I gotta send it out there. I had to retain an attorney, which was another few grand that just does that. And then each supplement was like 500. Like I was like, oh my God. They're like, just test them all. I'm like, what, another four or five grand? Are you kidding me? Like, right. guys, like this, and then I just got to a point where I'm like, I don't even care. Like. And then they sent back the results and it was 0.02 and 0.04, like 20 trillionth of a gram, like a microorganism. I'm, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, that's when I was mad. Then I'm like, all right, something was tainted. Something's up. This is crazy. Like, I don't even know what these products are. I've never taken them. Now you're telling me that there's like a trace amount that's in there. Like, come on. And then that's when I'm like, and then the attorney is like, dude, it's definitely contamination. Look at the articles that are coming out. He thought it was my none products. He said a lot of hydration products. Because when I got out there, I don't usually take nuns. But I needed to hydrate. I felt really like depleted. Of, of, I wasn't drinking enough water. So I bought a bunch of nun tabs. I sent those. They were negative. That was a waste of money there. But he said a lot of hydration products are getting a lot of contamination coming back. So I sent my nuns. I sent my BCAAs. Those, those were negative. Um, I don't want to disclose which one I just found that was contaminated, but I just found one, not yet until like, but I literally just got the results back yesterday, which I'm happy to announce. Um, but that's where it's at. Like right now, that's what's happening. Like they're getting like, they didn't get that. That's what I was more upset about is they gave me a lot of time, right? But they didn't give me enough time to test. And if I would have known early on, hey, test them early, like, like, um, like uh, Kelly. Katie did. Hey, Kelly, I'm sorry, Kelly, Kelly home. Um, I would have been much better off because I would have had to reduce sanction. You know, they would have reduced the amount just like her, and it would have at least proved my innocence in terms of what I was taking and the amounts that I was taking. Like I, I disclosed like the amounts that I had, but. You know, I didn't want to be like, look, I'm in communication with CrossFit. I'm still sending them lab reports. I'm still, 
you know, they put that out there and everybody's like, oh, it's final. I'm like, well, they're still taking my results of my testing, but you know, I didn't disclose any of that because I don't think people really care, man. Like, you know, that's why I put out what I had. I put out what I'm all about. And then if people want to sling mud, sling it. If you guys want to believe it, believe it. I really, really just like want to be able to express myself to you and to the world and to the CrossFit community, like what I'm about. And hopefully it, it comes off. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, listen, it sounds like you, it sounds like you, you watched or listened to the, the podcast that we've done talking about this. And yeah. I, I don't know if it, I don't know how clear it was. Cause I had a bunch of like ranty moments during that thing, but I'm pretty fucking torn over all of this. Like yeah. I, I know you, you know, we've, we've chatted before we've, we've had like a, a working relationship in the past yeah. and, you know, I also know how not regulated the supplement industry is and how easy it is for even the most popular products in the world to share, you know, a manufacturing line with products that are being made for like, you know, medical testing, but aren't mm -hmm. okay for, you know, human consumption or whatever. Like all these, these products are being made in the same factories, yeah. just being, just being packaged in different places. So contamination happens. But at the same time, I know how, you know, motivated people are to use that as an excuse because it is an actual thing. So uh, I think what what's interesting about this situation, and I think it's really good that you know you're you're kind of describing the timeline here, is that when we see something like Kelly Holmes' name announced, your name announced, the same product um, in your in your sample with like the same very trace amounts, yeah. Yeah. right? And then hers is cut down, the sanction is cut down, and yours isn't. The question is why? Why is there that difference? And it sounds right. like it's a procedural thing. get my lab results. Right, she only had two products she took. So she tested both of them. One, she did a third party, like all mine I would third party test. Like I was so anal about that. And um, hers, she only had two. She got them both tested, one came back contaminated, boom, she was done. You know, I tested four that came back negative and that's when they released it. Like right after that, like I literally had communication with them on Sunday and they released it on Wednesday. I was like, whoa. So that's what that's all about. And that's where, you know, in terms of the FDA and the regulation, that's one thing because my uncle, I mean my uncle, my brother-in-law is a state legislator and he was the one who, we started looking into that. And I'm like, something needs to be done, man. Just like peanut allergies. On there, you're going to have a label that says if you're allergic to any peanuts or any peanut product, like, because that's a matter of life and death. This ruins lives. And there's those people that are getting hit that it's not regulated and it's getting contaminated in these products, in these manufacturers that aren't being clean, that are having these crossovers. And it needs to say on there, this product may contain an illegal substance, uh, you know, a a PED uh, because we have other products that, that have this in them, just a label that states that because if you're competing and you don't see that and you think what you're taking is on that label, that's what you're taking. I'm not going, man, this stuff is really good. It says B6, B12, but this really works, man. Oh my God. Hey, you got, that's not what I'm doing. I'm going, okay, this is the product. I know what this does physiologically. This helps my and aids my recovery. This helps me on getting energy for my workout and, and between, you know, before on the aminos. This helps me with, you know, like these are the things that I look at. I look at all the, the you know, the, the, uh, the, the results of the product, but that needs to be regulated, man. And that's one thing that I can do in the Florida legislator. And I'm gonna take it, man. I'm gonna go there. That's why like CrossFit, whatever, like all the stuff that happens with CrossFit, Again, it's a microorganism. I want to make sure this doesn't happen to more people out there that are falling to in the same freaking pit that myself and Kelly are falling in because that is so damaging and it's so like – it's more of this irreversible damage that I can't bring back. Like once they put that out there, it's like – you know, and like I had to have talks with my kids like, guys, look, whatever you guys hear, you know me. I don't take any, and then people are like steroids. I'm like steroids, not even a steroid. I think you guys are talking about like some um, Enduroball or something. That's not it. Uh, that's not at least I've never heard of that. Um, the I think the it's a metabolic module, the way they put it, GW whatever. Maybe sure. I didn't. I even so I never even heard of that. And then the the like that's why for me like there just needs to be more protection 
for the minorities, which are the ones that are getting tested out there, you know, the elite athletes and MMAs and Olympians and all those. Um, and also for those people that are just your average Joe that are taking stuff they think they're taking and they're not because they can have something that their body reacts to that they don't know that can harm them. And that's, that's where if I can get it nationally, I'm going to do it because I got a lot of people down here that are supporting me. They're like, Sean, take, let's take this and turn this into a positive and let's, let's get this regulated. So that's my objective moving forward in terms of not allowing this to happen, you know, because it's a big problem. If you look at, like, to be honest, between you and when Ricky got hit and Emily, I never even heard of contaminated products. Right. Seriously. I never even, like, if there was an article and like, oh, contaminated, I'm like, ah, I, I seriously never even heard of it. Right. And then when it hit me, that's when I was like, what? This can't be. Now I knew that there has to be some kind of contamination or something because I know what I put in my body, period. I have a guy who's like my nutritionist and he's got major league baseball players, NFL guys. I've been with him 20 years. We go over the drug policy every year to see if they've added anything, to see if they put anything in there. And he does it. And he's like, look, in terms of like anything that you're taking, like creatine, because there's some creatines that are suspect that I won't take. And there's some things that he's like, dude, these guys – this is not a substance that you want to take because they've they've been they they've been on the, on the bubble in terms of lawsuits with people suing them for not putting the right products in there, spiking products. I've heard of spiking, never heard of contaminating contamination. Um, so that's the one thing that I think has been gone like to the blind eye and unregulated, and that needs to change. That needs to change now, and I'm going to go all the way to the state if I have to. So do you have do you, are, do you basically have like a legal case right now? Is that is that so absolutely you, you have two. So you have two products of the eight that you that you take during the game season that you tested that came back contaminated? No, I have four that came back negative. Okay. I have two that I just sent. One of them just came back contaminated. And I'm waiting to hear the other one. And then I have two more. I have eight. It's the same eight every year. I have two more that I'm holding on to that, again, it's just a, a, a dollar bill thing. Like, sure. I'm not going to sit there and drop four to five grand on testing, you know, like I just – I. I <laughs> it's it's just not feasible for me right now. So I'm I'm holding back for that reason, but I wish I would have just just done it and paid it so that I would have been in the same lines as Kelly cuz I know it's it's got to be one of the, I'm listening to my attorney though. He's like, "All right, what are you taking?" Okay, none, send those in. That was a waste of of testing. None tabs. I was like, "Really?" He's like, "Man, hydration products are popping up all over." I'm like, "All right, cool." So I sent those. So I just sent him what he was saying would be the most likely to be you know, come out positive. Um, so I still have two more that I might send him. Um, but he got hit with the fires out there. He's in, he's in LA and his whole thing like shut down. I should have already had everything done with those two sending out and getting them tested if this other one didn't come back. So I'm just waiting for that. And then CrossFit is waiting for me to send them those results of the, the lab testing because they've worked with this guy. Right. Funny thing is Kelly was, this was one his, his, her attorney as well. No, he's like, yeah, I have another CrossFit uh, athlete that I'm working with right now. Ended up being Kelly. I had no idea. So No idea. I, I found out. I got his connection through my, my sports attorney. He's like, hey, there's a guy that does all testing out there. And he deals with, with CrossFit athletes, Olympians, and professional athletes. Um, and he's the guy that, you know, can, has access to labs. And, you know, they do a whole breakdown of what you what tested, how much of it was tested. Like, they're serious. Like, it's... It's legit testing and CrossFit knows that. Like you go to them, they send the results. Cross is like, all right. It's not like, oh yeah, we tested this. Yes. Positive. Like it's, it's, it's a legitimate, like, you know, resource. Do you think, do you think, uh, if you know, you can basically provide this to HQ that they're going to take a look at your, your case again and kind of change the, the narrative, change the story. Uh, I think at a minimum, um, like I, I think that they'll reduce the sanctioning. Like they'll reduce the, um, you know, the the suspension. Um, like that, that I think they'll. And that's the other thing too. Like, you know, like when Ricky like got got hit, he didn't know it was an illegal substance, but he admitted taking it. Like he was taking it. He didn't, you know, like if you're taking something knowingly and you get hit, like, dude, four year ban is stiff for any means. Like that shouldn't. I, I think that's crazy. Like Olympians don't even get banned for more than a year, you know, six months to a year. 
I think it should be, you know, base. It should be a case by case basis. That's one thing where, like, if it's contaminated, you prove it's contaminated. That's why they dropped Kelly to two years. They'll probably drop mine. Like, I, I would love to be the first one to have just a year, even though I probably won't even use that. But you know, it's not going to happen. They're they're like four years. That's it. They're just black and white. And they Kelly was the first one that they reduced. Yeah, Kelly's you know, the first athlete she, they've ever reduced. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, but again, it has a lot to do with the trace amounts. That so, has a lot. I mean, there are in, in weightlifting, for example, a first, uh, um, getting a, a pop for the first time is a four year right off the bat. It used to oh, be yeah, only two years. Yeah. They, they changed it because there's so much doping in weightlifting. They needed oh, to do something to stop them. Um, yeah. but you know, I, I guess I know that I know that you, I'm running out of time with you. I don't want to take up any more of your time, but just to wrap up, um, you know, our, are what what is it you know looking forward obviously you, you kind of have a bunch of different steps here and and there's there's a lot going on but you know what what is it looking forward that you're you're trying most to, to accomplish here is it is it like a personal thing are you just trying to make sure that you know your name is cleared or are you trying to like prevent these products from getting out onto the market are you trying to get the names of your, these products like once you've kind of proven it like you know, you, you need to be able to say that it's not just this one thing, but it's both the things that you tested pies for the Austrian and then the GW whatever um, mm -hmm. that are that are in both these uh, these these samples. Right. So yeah. what does that look like? So that's a that's a, you know, pretty, I would say, like um, it's got a lot of meat to that, like what you're saying, because there's there's a lot of things, I think, first and foremost, to clear my name, like I want to be able to say, look, you know, this was, and even if people are like, oh, contaminated or not contaminated, you had it in your system, you're busted, whatever. Okay, I get that, whatever. But I want people to know the truth in terms of what happened to me, and that's the first thing. Second thing, I want this to be regulated. I want this not to happen to other people that are in my situation or in a situation where this is their livelihood. I mean, look at the guys that are fighting out there for their lives, you know, in that in the octagon. They're getting hit left and right. It's crazy. I was looking at, they're the ones that are really getting impacted because that's their life. That's their livelihood, you know? Um, that I want to be able to protect for mostly like the, those professional athletes out there that are getting hit and be able to get this regulated across the states like to, so this doesn't happen again. And third, most I think the most important thing for me is to make sure like, you know, all those that are out there that, again, like the mudslingers, all those, I really don't care. It's instead of not just so much clear my name, I want those people out there to be able to like understand like the process of what it takes to be at a certain level, because there's so many things that I do, um, you know, in between the ears, connecting to that, making sure that like you're balancing the things around you. Cause you can't have a balanced life with the kids and the wife and the, the work and the training, like that's never going to be in full balance, but there's times where you have to have that all in, in harmony. Like there's things that I do where I want to be able to educate people and say, look, you know, the products that I take are natural. Make sure you get them tested third party. Make sure that they've never been hit. Here's the good ones. Here's how I eat. When you, if you want to eat, you definitely got to count your calories. Like if, but dial in, don't do it over a year. You're going to get burnt out. I want, and here's how I balance my life. I take my kids with me to do the meditation stuff. I don't call it meditation then. I just call it deep breathing or just thinking or going to that place, that, my, that place that I like to go to, to, to let my thoughts out. I do that with them without going, guys, we're going to go to yoga and meditate. We're going to go like, so I include my family and I do these things and I've never felt better on that competition floor because of the things I've done. So if it's somebody that's going to be competing, doing a, you know, 10 K or Ironman or doing whatever, whatever they want to achieve. Like if you can do the, and take the tools that I have, but, I want these tools to be valued and I want people to be like, all right, he's not a cheater. This is who he is. He's done so many remarkable things over the five years and he's done it right. And this is what, he, and I haven't given my secrets out cause I was still competing, but there's things, I want that to come out without any tainting, without anybody going, dang, bro, I, how can I listen to this guy? Like, I don't believe him. I don't believe, that's what I want. And so that's why I know when, when I put the truth out there and I, and I talk to people like you, I'm open to any podcast because I feel like there's not enough people that are hearing the message. That's, that's really the most important thing. And then finally, the, the, the last thing that I want to achieve is to make sure like the parents at my school, like they're all coming up, hugging me, like 
Sean, we're so sorry. You know, we love you. You've done so many great things for our kids. Like, I can't even thank you. I'm like, like, those are the people that I really, like, don't want to let down. Yeah, man. I hear so, you. I, I hear you. I, uh, I, I respect that. I, I can't talk anymore about that. But, I got you. But, and that's, that's what hurts. Like, that's, that's what hurts. I don't know. He's, he's over there. <clears throat> but, well, um, yeah, man, I, I appreciate your time. Hopefully, um, you know, maybe once you get a little bit more, uh, info, once you get some more of yeah. those test results back and maybe some more communication with HQ, I, I'd, I'd love to, you know, talk to you again and, and do follow up and just see where things are at and what's going on. Absolutely. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, man. Take care. Thanks. All right.